Welcome everyone. I'm just going to wait a second until everybody's joined in from the lobby. Great, I believe everybody's in the room. Good evening and thank you for joining us for our second Meet the Innovators webinar organized in partnership with the STEAMIT project, Scientix, the STEM Alliance and the Career Advisors Network. My name is Eddie Grenmeyer and I'm a project and pedagogical officer for European SchoolNet and it is my great pleasure to be your host this evening. In our webinars, you will learn from experts in the teaching innovation in STEM, from professionals who have found ways to teach varied subjects using new technologies, and from entrepreneurs who found themselves in STEM innovation without a degree in science. They will share their experience and enlighten us about the skills and careers of tomorrow. But before I introduce our speakers, please let me go over a few housekeeping rules. My colleague Rocio is available in the chat to help you with any technical support you may need. So please do not hesitate to contact her if you need any assistance. She's also sharing a link to a signatures list for this event. Please take a short moment to fill it as it's an important formality for us to be able to organize future events. In addition, only by filling this form will you be able to receive the certificate of the attendance for this webinar. I'm just letting everybody know that the webinar is recorded and all the cameras are off and we will upload the webinar, the recording of the webinar on our Steemit and STEM Alliance and Scientex platforms. Finally, we'll be taking questions from our speakers in writing and we'll try to answer as many of them as possible at the end of each presentation. So please ask any questions you may have for our speakers in the chat. Now, let's go on with our first speaker tonight. Carmen Esquerra Serrano is an engineer and former mathematics champion. She's got experience in the energy sector and she recently co-founded Kotokan, a free math problem solving platform powered by teachers who want their students to enjoy math and develop thinking skills. She will tell us about her journey and how teachers and mentors have helped her discover her mathematics skills and inspired her to pursue a career in engineering. Carmen, thank you very much for joining us tonight. The floor is yours. Many thanks, Eddie, and hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. And let me share my screen. Perfect. So thanks a lot for being here today. And well, my name is Carmen Izquierdo, and I would like to share with you my, the influence, as Eddie said, my teachers had in the decision of pursuing a STEAM career. So you can do the same with your students. Um, <clears throat> a second. Well, first of all, uh, Eddie did a short introduction to me, but I would like to introduce myself a little bit more. <laughs> I, I studied in a French school in a, in a small city in the north of Spain, where, where I had the chance to have wonderful teachers that supported and pushed me to do, to do the best. That means that thanks to them, I, I went to some math competitions and ended winning the, Olympi the Path Olympics in my, in my city. I also went to some scientific campus and did some projects. Uh, and thanks to that, I think that's how I discovered that I loved what I was doing. And I started, I started and finished studying industrial engineering. Then I, I worked in the renewable energy sector, in corporate finance. And one year ago, I decided to quit and start my entrepreneurship in education. <laughs> well. Uh, some of you, I think you already know Kotokan, but what we founded is a free math problem solving platform made for teachers and by teachers. So in platforms, teachers can use our thousands of interactive math problems or, or create their own on the platform, customize their own curriculums and learning paths for their students, and also save time in corrections and following up with what, what their students are, are doing so they can focus in what's the most important thing, which is their students' difficulties and progress. And well, of course, for students, it's a, it's a way to, to enjoy maths, you know, to enjoy and engage with maths in a funniest, closest way. But that's not the part, the most important part of my presentation. 
Now I would like to talk about how I believe you teachers can help students to, to decide to pursue a STEAM career in the, in the same way teachers did with me. Well, STEM is, is not just a subject from school, but, but for me, it's a, well, for, me, for many people, I think it's a, it's a way of thinking and doing and, and an important skill set that could see new generations working together to, to solve some of the world's greatest challenges. And the STEM stands for technology, engineering, mathematics, and science, but not, it's not about being an expert in, in all those things. Instead, uh, STEM is about harnessing the, the essential transferable skills behind them. For example, um, a scientist, <clears throat> a scientist knows how to do hypotheses, to experiment, to analyze, to, to evaluate what they are discovering. And, but here is the problem that I think we have with, with STEM. The problem is that in many cases, people confuse STEM careers with something technical and, and boring. In fact, many people, when I was studying engineering, I, I remember people saying, oh, that's boring. Ah, why are you doing that? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, for me, it makes sense. If you if you look at the word engineer in Google, what do you think you you'll find the the left image or the or the image on the right? Yeah, of course, is the left image. <laughs> and the truth is that engineers are not people that that only design and build things that wear yellow waistcoats and helmets. In fact, engineers are inventors. They are discoverers. They are the people that face the greatest challenges on earth. And what we need to do is to break down the, this prejudice towards engineering and all the STEAM careers, because it's, I know the engineering case, but I know it's the same for math, for science, for everything. As I said, STEM is not only about knowing a, a set of technical skills, it's all technical things, STEM is about soft skills. Of course, yeah, technology is um, making our lives better, but we need to know how to get there. STEM workers need to be able to, to communicate with peers, with investors, to get the project funded, with partners, with clients. They also need to be able to collaborate, work together to, to increase their, their productivity. They need to be creative. How, how are we going to improve if we are not being creative and we stick to our comfort zone and always do the same things? And yeah, of course, we also need uh, to be to be critical, to be able to think without being influenced by by other people and other people's opinion. The truth is that uh, these technical skills, yeah, we, we need it, but alone they are not going to drive progress. We need all those soft skills for a for a better world. And here's the big question: How can we foster STEM careers <laughs> and uh, end with the with the prejudices that are around it and make new generations be thrilled to be engineers or to be data scientists or, or mathematicians, teachers. For me, that's uh, teachers. Teachers are superheroes. You teachers, you have the power to make students enjoy STEM subjects and want to pursue one of these careers. It's in your hands. You are mm, shaping the way new generations think and you have the power to foster STEM careers more than, I think, even more than parents. From, from my experience, it was thanks to, to the wonderful teachers I had, but I always loved maths and, and physics and STEM subjects in general, technology, and that's why I ended up, of course, studying engineering. I think it's also because of the good habits that, uh, at, that we had at school and what I saw there, Thanks to teachers, thanks to colleagues, the projects we did, that um, I decided to pursue this career and now to be an entrepreneur because I know entrepreneurship is not exactly a STEM career, but it's also something that we need to foster. And well, now I um, I will discuss the the three elements that I think my my teachers did well in, in promoting the STEM entrepreneurship and, and ambition. Not only for me, but for most of the students in my class, because we were 20 on my in my class and 15 
16, I think, 51 us of us we pursue science, technology, a STEAM career. So I think they did a, a good job. First of all, find your allies. What's that? Bring STEAM professionals to the class. I mean, this can be some of your friends or some of the parents of the of the students, parents from other classes, or even old old students. I mean, former students from the school. Maybe you can cold call some um, companies and they will come. That maybe is going to be a bit more difficult. But if you have the good, the right network, people will be super happy to to go ten minutes to the class and share their experience with the kids. Like these people, the people that are already in STEM careers, they are the best people to explain what they do and what is it's a STEM career, what they are doing in their day to day, how what are their problems, the, the, the problems they had to face. And if you don't find these people in the in the class, you can also you know, try to organize webinars with them if they don't want to move to school. But I think you can you have a big network of of contacts thanks to schools to reach uh, STEAM professionals and make them join, join you in one of your lessons. Secondly, get out of the classroom. I know this is not easy, but it is perfect if the, if the students leave the school for, for one day or for a couple of hours and visit some workplaces, or you can do a visit to Google, for example, or to a factory and see what they are doing. So get out of the classroom, get out of the school and see the world, see what's happening out there. Also projects, do projects at, uh, in, your, in your class. I remember at, at school, we had some compulsory projects it was called the PPE. And it was a project uh, on science that we had to make our own research in groups and we were working on it for one year. You know, my, my project was on renewable energy and I ended doing studying engineering and working in renewable energy. And I perfectly remember it. I only was 16 then. Also, there are a lot of competitions and things out there and that foster STEAM, STEAM careers, not only the, the math contests and competitions, but also in collaborations with universities. At least here in Spain, I... One year, one summer, I managed to go to a thing called Campus Científico, which is in English is Scientific Campus. And it was uh, being in a, in a university with other, other students from, from Spain for one month, working on, a, in my case, working in the electric vehicle and, and, a, renewable energy pro and a renewable energy project. It, not, it wasn't very advanced, of course, but it was like, a first um, insight of how it looks like the, the workplace, the work life, and not only the, the theory and talking to other people out in the class. And for me, the, the third thing, um, yeah, I have a math platform, I know. <laughs> but for me, the, and the third most important thing is make maths meaningful. And why I'm saying that, Math is the subject around which all STEM revolves. I mean, if a kid doesn't like maths, he's not going to enjoy physics or, or he's not going to be a data scientist. You need maths. People are people and students, they are, they are scared of maths. Even when they are my age or older people, they are scared of, of mathematics. The truth is super useful and, and it's, they're not that difficult. I know it's, it's easy to say that, but yeah. How can you make kids like maths, which is the most hated subject? I think the kids need to understand. It's not learning by hard things, but understanding maths, applying it to real life, doing um, real cases, doing scenarios with manipulative tools so they can see and touch and, and understand. I think that's the, the most important thing. I remember I had some, some friends that, were scared to do um, economics because there, were, there was maths in economics and it's not a very advanced level of maths. Maths is not that difficult. They, kids, they, they have the ability to understand. Some of them, they will be faster. Some of them, they will be slower. But once you understand something, you, you like it. And 
you're not scared of it. So make maths meaningful and make them understand maths. And for me, I think these are the three most important tips and things that that helped me uh, when I was at school and maybe after that also to to talk to the right people to go out of the classroom and to understand mathematics. And then all the other things will come automatically. And that's everything. Thanks a lot. I hope this was helpful to you. And um, feel free to, to contact me or well, to visit Kotokan to contact me. You have here your my email. If you want me also to, to talk to in your class and to bring me to do a webinar and talk to the students for 10 minutes and talk to them, talk to them about my experience. I'll be very happy to do it. So everything's welcome. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And Great. Thank you very much, Carmen. Um, it's been a bit a bit fast, maybe. No, that's fine. That gives us more time for questions. So please, everyone, don't be shy. Do um, share your questions in the chat. We've got um, a few questions that have been coming along. So the first one is from Anita, who is asking, can you show us how Kotakan makes maths more meaningful? Yeah, as I said, uh, in Kotokan, <clears throat> hello, Anita. In Kotokan, teachers can create their own content, so they can create personalized content for their students. So they, it's not the same doing a math problem regarding something that I don't know what is it, but a math problem that includes my name and my colleagues' names. And it's, I'm feeling close to the topic, so they're going to feel, oh, that's, I remember that day that happened this thing and I have a, problem, a math problem talking about that. That's the number one, but also the number two in, in Kotokan, uh, of course, it's technology. Technology kids enjoy technology more than using a notebook. But Kotokan teacher, uh, sorry, students have hints, have motivational quotes. We foster growth mind. I, I mean, we're fostering a growth mindset, so kids don't give up and they understand that failing. Uh, I mean, doing something wrong is not failing. Doing something wrong ten times is discovering ten ways not to do a thing. But it's positive. It's that kind of growth mindset we're trying to foster. Great, thank you. That that um that question kind of cues us in into the the second question from Honorata. Uh, in your opinion, how can teachers make mathematics more attractive to students? Because I know for a Per, from personal experience, uh, it has been a, a terrifying topic in school that was very, very scary. So, how do you how do you advise people go about making it more attractive to yeah, students? Yeah, as, as I said, I think using technology and some gamification always helps. I mean, kids they love that things, and um, using close content to them is. Uh, I think I was uh, replying to Anita. Using content they, they understand maybe about their favorite about a math problem about Spider-Man. I'm sure a math problem about Spider-Man is much better than a math problem about uh, I don't know Joe going to the supermarket and buying apples. So that kind of content, that creativity makes kids like it. I mean they, they feel close to it. They understand what they are talking about. If they are there are math problems also, as I said, um, that engage a couple of kids in the class. So it's one of the kids doing something with another and all the problem is around that. It's going to be super, I mean, it's going to be funny for the rest of the class. That's, that's true. And I have, I know some teachers that are already doing that and they say kids love it. They, they really enjoy it. So personalized content, personalized problems. Cool. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Anita, Anita is on fire tonight. She's very, very eager to learn more about Kodokan. And she's asking uh, if you could show us some examples of problems that you are using in Kodokan. So we've got a bit of time for you. So if you want <laughs> to take want us to through a little more? bit of a tour, you can <laughs> actually take us through a, a brief tour of Kodokan. Okay. <laughs> Let me open code again. I hope it's working now. Yeah, it's working. So I closed all my tabs. Uh, 
I think now you can see my screen. Well, this is called yes, can. we can. Let me see. I think with this class I can log in. Yeah. So this is Kotokan, and here we have some. Let me see. This is Kotokan. You can find the the challenges. The I mean the um, <clears throat> all the categories. So we are following the curriculum. We have Kotokan in English and Spanish, and here teachers can find the content they need. I remember one I love. Uh, there's a challenge. A challenge is a set of problems that I love. I don't remember where it was. For example, let me see which one. I really like this one, the robot, because it's a well, it's a teacher that is here. Hello, Marika. Marika. <laughs> She did that, that problem, she created it for us, and it's a robot that is following your path, and after each of the problems, you it's like a brain teaser, not only a problem, but it's also a brain teaser. So the kids enjoy not only solving the problems, but seeing how they are progressing and engaging with, with it. Let me see if I find the one I wanted to show. No, it's not here. Well, I don't remember where it was, but what I was saying about creating um, your own chat, your own problems, you can do it here super fast and super easy. You go, you create title, etc. The thing is, you can create your own interactive and digital problems with the names of your students. So here it's going to be like. Edney was in a webinar, blah, 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 blah. and they, they will. <laughs> I don't know if I have more time. I wasn't expecting to do a demo on the platform, <laughs> but maybe we have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> that, is the, that is the beauty of, of live webinars, is that you end up in situations you did not expect. Uh, in any case, I think we're, we're getting quite a lot of, of support and quite a lot of thank yous from the attendees tonight who math teachers and non-math teachers who really believe in the importance of what Kotokan is doing uh, and the, the use of Kotokan to make mathematics attractive to students and in, in, in I guess in in the follow-up of that STEM careers in, in general. Um, just one final question uh, is, did you have any particular challenges when you when you became an entrepreneur? Like as a, did you find that shifting from, you know, a scientist into a businesswoman, uh, were there any particular challenges? I mean, being an entrepreneur in general, you you came from the background you come doesn't matter. It's always a challenge. It doesn't matter if you are a businessman or I mean if you studied business or, or engineering, it's always challenging for sure. But I would say I really enjoy it and I mean every day is challenging, that's the truth. More than in a regular job where you get Paid at the end of the month here we are struggling every day and trying to do things better and pushing and working on the weekends but they think it pays off and it feels super rewarding to see we are doing something like fulfilling and we're trying not only to do a big company and all the things but we're trying to do something good for for the people for the world i mean it's, it's education it's maths it's sharing good content with other teachers i think uh I don't know what will happen to Kotokan, but I think this this is a great experience. And if anyone has a project in mind, I think you should follow it. <laughs> great. Thank you very much for your enthusiasm and for your honesty. I think you you do hit the nail on the head. Is I think entrepreneur is a hard you know, 24 seven job in any case, no matter where yeah. you come from. Uh, but but Anita on the on the chat is saying challenges make it more interesting and rewarding. And I think that's that's quite a nice uh, summary uh, of the situation is if it's worth doing, then it's not going to be it's not going to be easy unless you are somehow very, very lucky. 
Well, thank you very much, Carmen, for your presentation tonight. It's been great, and, and I'm glad to see that some people are working really, really hard to make mathematics more appealing because you, you are right, it is a door uh, and a window to every other STEM topic and beyond, I think, understanding uh, life and the, and the universe in general. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Eli, and thanks all the teachers here. Thank you very much, Carmen. Now, um, I will just take a second to remind everyone to please go and sign the signatures list. I know that Rocio has been sharing uh, the link a few times and will probably do so again uh, in the second half of the event. Uh, so if you haven't done it, please do it uh, so we can um, get as much information from you as possible and we can send you your certificate of attendance. Now, our next, our next speakers for tonight are Bente Malberg and Maria Turas from Noteblock. Noteblock is a startup from Barcelona, which aims to bring innovation and technology into stationery and education. Its mobile app, Noteblock Scanner, transforms any smartphone or tablet into a scanner and document organizer and allows students and teachers to quickly digitize and share their notes, homework and exams. Noteblock's main purpose is to help students be more productive, learn and stay organized. Maria and Bente are co-founders of Noteblock. They have background in business administration, advertising and journalism. So tonight they will tell us that it does not take a degree in STEM to be passionate about science and to become innovators in the field. Maria and Bente, thank you very much for joining us tonight. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are going to share our screen one second. And nice to see some people. I think we have seen some of the people attending before. I yeah, I've talked to you before. <laughs> so, so nice the teachers have already uh, listened to the story behind Noteblock, but uh, hopefully we can share some more uh, insights uh, today regarding careers in, in STEM. But nice to see you again. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we we are going to structure the, the session today, as you can see here. So firstly, we will explain a little bit about who we are. Uh, then we will explain you the story behind Noteblock and finally about the Noteblock scanner app. Uh, then we will explain as well uh, the roles that exist in a net tech company like, like Noteblock. We will also share our experience with, with the STEM, uh, with, in a STEM company, let's say, without having a STEM background. And finally, you can ask us as many questions as, as you want. So, as I said, uh, my name is Maria. I'm one of the two co-founders. I'm from Barcelona. I lived uh, in other cities. Uh, and then back in 2009, I came back to, to Barcelona. I started my own company and I'm working with mobile apps since 2010. My background is in basically in communication and journalism. Hi, my name is Bente. For those who don't know me, I'm originally from Sweden, but I've been living in Barcelona since 2005. Uh, I'm a graduate in business administration and before Noteblock, I worked in future product marketing. So that's introduction of new pr uh, products together with the R&D team in HP. So the, the story behind Noteblock, I'm going to go through it very quickly. We started, or Bente, Bente started with the idea back in 2010. Noteblock, it's quite interesting because Noteblock comes from her final paper in university. Uh, it started as a company uh, giving away free notebooks to university students. Mm -hmm. And then um, in 2015, this is when we launched the Noteblock scanner app. In 2018, it became viral in some countries like Russia or Indonesia. And last year, the, we participated in Impact Tech Acceleration Program, uh, which took us uh, further. I will explain more later. So basically, uh, regarding the Noteblock Scanner App, which is the more technical part in the, in the company, uh, it solves um, the issues you can see here. So basically, it uh, solves the issue of having to exchange clean documents in remote settings. It's also an organization tool for documents. Um, it also helps uh, people, students, teachers, and families that do not have a desktop scanner at their house. Um, it also helps teachers to receive 
homework in a clear and nice way instead of having to receive uh, mobile taken pictures. And also um, it helps students in their uh, keeping their documents private as uh, there are other apps that perform sim similar uh, features, but um, private companies have access to these documents. This does not happen in no block. So a little bit about um, the scanner app. So it's primarily used by teachers and students to scan, save, and organize any types of notes, homeworks, or documents. Uh, it is safe and easy to use. We as a company do not have access to anything that is scanned. Um, it is a lightweight app. So it's very great to recommend to students because you don't need a very expensive mobile phone or the new mobile phones to use it. It's compatible with all the old devices as well. And it's available for free to download on Google Play, App Store, and the Huawei App Gallery. And here on the right, you can see how it works. So the app detects the contour of the page, and then it removes the shadow and gives you one neat uh, image that you can save as a JPEG or a PDF file. So here is a real classroom example that we found from a student in Twitter. Um, so you have, you can, oops, whoops, sorry. You can see here that they're scanning a whiteboard from very far away, and this is the final result, a really neat and clear image, which is completely legible. So today, so like we mentioned before, we're available in the app stores uh, for the general public. We have around 8 million downloads. It's available in 30 different languages. I think we soon have all the languages of the European Union, and we're continuously adding new features. So most recently, we partnered with Huawei Education, and we have developed this feature you can see here. So now directly in the app, using the, the pen from Huawei, you can add, annotate, or highlight inside of the app. So that's an added benefit work for students and teachers. And with the iOS, we're working on it now, and we will release an update in December 2021. So, as I said in the very beginning, last year we participated in Impact Tech Tech, which is a, an accelerator program uh, that uh, European Schoolnet was part of. And during the acceleration program, we developed um, another version of the scanner app, uh, which is the licensed version. Right now, the app is available in the app stores completely for free, but users, being them students, teachers, or whoever downloads the app, will see advertising inside the app. So this is the way the note block company makes money by showing advertising. Um, we realized during, during the, the acceleration program that uh, especially for younger kids, uh, if the school recommends the app to them, it was not good that it shows advertising. So we are going to release a licensed version of the app, which schools or even teachers can acquire for their students. And once the student downloads the app, uh, he or she will introduce like a password that we will provide to, to them. And obviously there will be no ads displayed. And we are looking for schools right now to participate in the beta version. So if you believe it can be interesting, just please get in yeah, touch. Yeah, get in touch and uh, we yeah. will try the, the license version with you. Together, yeah. Yeah. And secondly, we developed this other, uh, this other module, which uh, we call it Noteblock Scanner SDK. SDK stands for Software Development Kit. It's basically a module that any existing app in the market can introduce into it and enjoy the scanning feature of Noteblock. So imagine if you work in a school that the school itself has a, an application for students or or teachers, and the school would like to, to have a scanner feature within the school's app, it is now possible just by adding a couple of lines of code that we can provide to, to your IT team. And now to talk a little bit about the roles within a mobile application, so like Noteblock, for example. So we have divided the site into STEM and non-STEM. So in STEM, we could say, for example, the programming of the app, which is the coding of the app. And the programming can be developed in several different aspects. For example, the front-end development, back-end development, um, computer vision. So computer vision, for example, is what we use for the, 
for the algorithm of the app. Computer vision means that you train a computer to recognize an object. So in our case, it is trained to recognize the contour of the pages, for example. So you need a lot of, well, math, programming, engineering, yeah. And then we have uh, non-STEM related roles. So we have, for example, product management. This is about understanding the needs of the um, of your target market or customer. So understanding, for example, what type of product the students or teachers would need and how you manage that product for its life cycle. So how do you keep improving it? When do you introduce new features and so on? In this role, you are working together with the app developers or programmers, and also the designers of the application, so like the visual aspects. Then we have communication, which is what Maria studied. So this entails, for example, all the copywriting, all the texts that you see, uh, PR, so public, um, sorry, pre-R, press releases, uh, well, anything re related to communication. We have business development, which is like sales, so selling the app, to whoever is the, the customer. Art is also really important. So photography, we have graphic design. This also combines with user interface design. So this is about like, what does the app look like? Where do the buttons go? What icons are we using and so on? This is all arts related. And then there are other things like, for example, accounting or finance and human resources, amongst other things. So uh, how do we do it without having a, a STEM background and, and have a company and, and be managing a company that is in, in this field, right? So I think at the end of the day, this is as in any company. So you have to listen to what the market needs, I guess, the first thing. Uh, in our case, uh, since we were born uh, as a free paper notebook, as I said. It was not a tech company in the very beginning. Uh, our target are students. So it was very important to know what their needs were in order to continue growing in a different range of products or whatever we wanted to do in the, in the future. Also, uh, it has been very, very important for us to collaborate with STEM profiles uh, from teachers to students as well and professionals in the industry. As Vente said before, one of the most important things in Noteblock in the, in the app is, for example, the, the computer vision and the algorithm behind it. So we were in touch with different universities, computer vision centers in, in Barcelona, etc., cetera, to, to came up with the, 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 the algorithm we, we have today. It's also crucial to find the right talent for your company, like uh, not everyone can work anywhere, so uh, everywhere, I mean. Um, as uh, Carmen said during her presentation, it's very important uh, communication and, and soft skills. Um, understanding as well how others think and process information. We have noticed that, Bente and I, like uh, our mind and our brain is not programmed the same way as a STEM professional. So it's very interesting to, to hear an the exchange. we have come across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody. <laughs> no, we, can, we are always talking from our own experience, yeah. of course. Like we cannot generalize. It's uh, our particular experience that we are sharing with you. So yeah, it's very funny. Sometimes we have conversations with our team and we can notice that our brain works different. And uh, this is, uh, then it comes to the, the second point here, like value everyone's ideas, not an idea is better than another, and one idea can lead to, to another one. Um, yeah, that, that final point, no knowledge of STEM, no problem. I can tell you, like, uh, I, as I said, I've been working with apps since 2010. I'm still alive and happy to do it. And of course, sometimes I would like to have uh, more technical knowledge because there, it's also a challenge sometimes to understand uh, some specific, specific uh, technical things. But I survived, and I'm very happy the way we work in, in Noteblock in general. OK, so this, <laughs> how were our school days with STEM? This slide is a bit uh, conflicting because we do not have the same experience. Um, when I went to school, actually, I did the, um, the STEM subjects were my favorites. So chemistry, physics, like science, it's what I liked the most. 
and I did the science um, in my bachelor as well. I did a science focused degree. So I don't really think that my teachers, I don't really have any complaints. I mean, I loved my teachers and everything was super interesting for me. So I think here is more Maria's <laughs> yeah, point we, of view. Uh, yeah, we were uh, building up this uh, presentation and it was funny because it led us to talk about things we have never talked before, Bente and I, which are precisely our experience in, in school regarding STEM subjects. So I was, uh, both my parents are mathematicians, so I come from a, a family where STEM is uh, quite important. But uh, yeah, I liked it until I was about 14 or so. But then I, I, I don't want to say it was uh, my teacher's fault or I was a teenager, maybe I was a little bit rebel, I don't know. But uh, I lost my interest in, in STEM. And partly it was, I've always liked to touch things and, and, and practice more than theor theoretical stuff. And I was missing that part. Like, uh, for example, uh, an example, algebra or equations. I only saw the numbers on a, on a whiteboard, but never understood why it was useful. I think also Carmen mentioned something about that, like put your students to know why why these things are important, right? So I never knew, or at least I I, I was not able to discover the uh, the way it could be useful to me by that time or or in the future. So um, things like, like I I always thought STEM was boring for from 14 to 16, and then at 16 here in Spain they tell you you have to choose between science or social studies. So this is why I took uh, the social path and then ended up in, in communication. And uh, another reflection that we were, we were actually thinking about it now is that, so we are working with mobile apps, so primarily, but when we went to school, like depending on the age, at least when we went to school, it, this did not exist. We did not have any programming, uh, no exposure to programming. There were no mobile phones. Computers were basically coming out. So we were working in an area where we had no experience from, uh, from studying. So we were thinking about the students of today. The question is, even if they choose to study science, like what professions will exist in the future that don't exist now? And yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, feel free to write to us if you wanna no. keep in touch. Yes, uh, I will stop sharing, you see, okay. Great, thank you very much both. We have we have shared uh, the link to your website. So if people, if the teachers want to get in touch and, and want to participate in your beta test, they can do it and they can reach out to you. Um, we have a first question here. Uh, so how did you develop the Noteblock app, which is not your area of expertise? Can you tell us how you developed the idea of it? You want to? Okay. The idea came from <laughs> students. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, as uh, I said, Noteblock comes from, the app comes from a notebook, a paper notebook. Uh, we continue making paper notebooks and we deliver each year 150,000 free notebooks to university students in Spain. Uh, it's demos demonstrated that taking, taking notes by hand is way better than in a computer or a tablet. This is why we will never stop making those notebooks. In the page number five in these notebooks, there is a questionnaire for students where we ask, how can we improve a paper notebook? We have received thousands of answers during those last eight years. And back in 2013 and 2014, there were students telling us that they would like to have a digital component that would let them keep their notes in a digital format so that they would not have to carry around their notebook or books all the time. And this is why we came up with the idea of a mobile app. I've always been fascinated with mobile apps. Uh, I had one of the very first apps in Spain that was released back in 2009. And this is how we, like, we had the idea of making a scanner app, like 
a, a, an app that would digitize the, the, the paper or the documents that the students need to digitize. So I already had some experience in app uh, developing, not coding the app itself, but the process of how you make an app. So basically you need to think of what the app needs to do. Then you need to like draw the wireframes, which are the different screens. You have to think about the user experience. So how will be the transition between screens and the different features and so on. And then of course, since we don't have the technical knowledge to code the app itself, we had to hire people for that. They are part of our team, of course. And also in the specific case of scanner app, as Bente said, uh, you need the computer vision part so that the app can detect the contour of a document or a whiteboard or whatever piece of paper that needs to be scanned. So we also have uh, in our team computer vision experts. This is how we did it. Great. Thank you very much for that little travel back in time in your story. <laughs> um, You've, you've mentioned having um, obviously no background uh, in STEM and, and being more on the on the uh, business side and, and the design side. Um, does it make it challenging um, managing a, a business that is based on the developing of an app when you when you don't have that knowledge? And I guess the second part of that question is, do you become better at STEM? because you now really see the point of, of the STEM background that you don't have? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish, I mean, I wish when I went to school that programming existed. I think I would have liked to study programming. I still want to study programming. I have to do that at some point. Uh, to manage people in STEM, I mean, we are, I feel like we're working together with them. So we're learning a lot from them and like, Obviously, since we lacked the experience, it's both good and bad. Sometimes it's good because you can request things and try to do things that perhaps are not so easy to do or feasible technically. So it's good to be a bit naive in the beginning. Uh, but then you under like then things that might seem complicated to us for them to do might be super easy. So it's really, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think when it comes to ma management of people, uh, it's it, it, sometimes it's challenging because, for example, last week uh, we could notice that one of our team members that uh, works in coding was getting frustrated because uh, he had spent a lot of time trying to accomplish something, uh, some specific feature. He couldn't like really make it work. Now it seems it works. So. Uh, uh, it's difficult sometimes to understand a frustration of something that you have no clue about, right? So managing these situations can be as, as well challenging because of this lack of knowledge. But as you said, like working now in, in STEM and, and so on makes us want to learn sometimes. Like mm -hmm. I would love to go as well. And if this is something I would have never thought, I know, when I was 18. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a lot of people like, I don't know, art, for example. So in my school, they could never, the explanation to if you would study arts, um, when I went to school was that you could work as an artist. And that's very complicated. There are so many career options for people that study art, graphic design, and so on. They might actually end up working with a technical product and, a, te and a technical team, yeah. videos. Like there's like so many different yeah. opportunities now to work on like technological things, even if you're not doing the science, science classes. Great. Yes, thank you very much. I think I think you're the living embodiment of of that that reality that to make STEM attractive, you need to make them real. They need to not just be numbers, but they need something that you can work with and create with. And 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 this is part of the STEAM it project as well. So we are we are working really hard to connect everything and to make everybody understand uh, that it all comes together beautifully in the end. Now, I'm very glad to see that that tonight we've got a lot of a lot of girl power. We've got we've got women entrepreneurs, we've got women scientists, we've got women artists. Now, I, I, the next question is going to be to to all of you, to to both of you, uh, and to Carmen as well. Did you encounter any particular challenges um, being women in 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 careers that you know to some extent have been 
dominated or promoted, you know, as being more uh, male oriented. And do you have any advice for uh, teachers that are with us tonight to help them empower their uh, their female students? <laughs> what so I can uh, I, I think I've been really lucky. Uh, it, from where I'm working now and where I worked before as well. So I have not encountered any problems in my case for being a woman. I feel like I have uh, mm, had the exact same opportunities, but I of course know that is not the case everywhere. But I feel lucky in that respect. What about you? I don't know. The same, like uh, I have had, like I feel I have got the very same opportunities and as as a as a boy uh, actually I think my I, my brother is an engineer and and i'm not and why i i have no clue it's because i don't i don't, i didn't like it at that time not because of any other specific thing and what i noticed right now uh working in in stem all the or the or the vast majority of the stem profiles are men this is true but I am not 100% sure the reason behind that. Because if I just look at my specific case, coming from a family that let us study whatever we wanted, I could have ended up in engineering as well, but I didn't want to, so I took another path. And I am not sure why there is uh, this uh, smaller amount of girls or women into STEM. I even question or I even wonder myself, maybe it is the same for more women, not just me. So you know what I mean? Like it's it's not that I do not have a STEM background for any other reason that it, it is just that I didn't like it. So there, there is a lot of debate around this about how to make uh, more girls interested into that. And I'm not sure if that's the right debate. I know the, it, it sounds a little bit contro controversial, especially be, me being a woman, right? I don't think you need to push anyone to anything. Like let, let students do whatever they, they like to do and they will succeed if they find their passion. Great, thank you. Does uh, Carmen have? Yeah, <laughs> I agree with you more or less, okay? I I'm an engineer. That's true. That in in my class at the university, it was like a 20% women, and there was with men, and they were nice and teachers. There was no difference. But what I think is the the difference in STEM careers between genders uh, comes from the earliest education, and that girls we tend to play with dolls and all this stuff while boys are playing with cars and engineering games. And the truth is, in my family, I have some engineers and my parents knew that I like it much and they were buying me a engineering games. So I was building a, a, a wind, I don't know how to say wind it. Wind. I was building like engineering things, like super simple. When I was a kid, a kid, I had chemistry games and my friends, female friends, they weren't playing with the things. And there's a big difference in that education. I'm not saying it's the teachers. In most of cases, it's the, the parents. And uh, regarding in the work life, I've been working in a corporate for, for every, I mean, most of the people there were also men. And yeah, sometimes you find some comments or some things that you don't, maybe they are only jokes, but you don't have to Mm, only smile and I'll suggest to all the women to speak loud and to say what they think and the most important thing to be confident I mean I think I don't know why and women we tend to be a bit less confident or to have some prejudices or we don't want to make mistakes we need to be confident it's okay to make mistakes it doesn't matter that's what I would say to future female generations I mean, also to male, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think at the end of the day, that's what, what we're all working for. You know, we're we're working so that students in general uh, discover the value and their passion for STEM careers. 
Well, thank you very much to all of you for joining us tonight. It's been very, very interesting to learn about your different career paths, whether they are in STEM or not in STEM, and how they got you to just be inspired and uh, want to inspire future generation. Thank you also everyone who attended this event tonight. Uh, we've been very, very happy to have you with us for those two uh, STEM innovators webinars, the one we had last week and this one tonight. Before I close tonight's uh, meeting, I would like to remind you uh, first of all to go and sign up the signatures list if you haven't done so already. And also about our upcoming webinar next week on the 25th, Thursday. We are doing a webinar on the topic of inclusive and accessible STEM teaching. In it, Scientix Ambassadors and a partner, key to enable from the STEM Alliance, will tell us about the use of technology to empower students living with disabilities. So it's going to be a very uh, new branch where you're going to get to learn about how to help students that have far too often uh, left behind because they just don't have the same capacities, uh, the same physical capacities as uh, all the other students. My colleague Rocio uh, is sharing the link to that webinar in the chat, so feel free to click on it and register. It's going to be a very, very exciting event and we look forward to see you there. Thank you very much to everyone who has attended. Thank you again to our speakers tonight. It's been an honor having you around and sharing your histories and experience. And we look forward to seeing all of you to our next event next week and the next events that we are organizing with the STEMIT project, the STEM Alliance and the Scientex project. Thank you very much and have a great evening, everyone.